uh, work at the Vicuña Maquena. I'm part of the Vicuña Maquena uh, section of APRESID. This is part of the 28th APRESID Annual Congress Forever Alive, Forever Green. Do you, throughout my presentation, or throughout the presentation, you will be able to submit questions through the box that is on the right of your screens. And after the presentation, you will be asking questions to the speakers. You please ask your questions while the presentation is going on. Now I'm going to introduce, to briefly introduce each of the speakers. Engineer Aníbal Por Domingo. He's an agriculture engineer, graduated in La Pampa. He has a master's degree in animal science from the New Mexico State University. He has a PhD in animal science granted by the same university. He's a researcher at INTA. Angil Experimental Station. He works in the area of animal production. He's the coordinator of the National Animal Production Program of INTA, an assistant professor at the La Pampa National University. He's an adjunct professor of Clemson University in the US, and he's also an adjunct professor at an Australian University. He, is, he was also the director of 25 dissert dissertations and the author of 175 papers in scientific journals. He, is the, he made all the negotiations for the signing of inter agreements of cooperation among several institutions. Miguel Chavas is an engineer. Agric uh, agriculture and livestock production engineer. He has worked for 15 years managing one of the uh, managing uh, the cattle feeders company. He has work, uh, worked for cattle feeders and Tyson Foods and offices in San Luis and La Pampa. He was the CEO of Avex for three years. He was the general manager of the pork production area and rural activities of Palladini, and currently he is the director of Swift Argentina. We will start with this plenary session, Argentine beef quality. improving the value or attaching value to the end product. As consumers, our goal is that when we buy a product, the product meets certain features, and they should be related to the business, to the beef business. As farmers, we must take into account the consumer's wishes and needs. So, when people talk about getting farmers close to producers, it's very useful. That is a statement from the farm to the plate. So, from this point of view, we must think that we produce beef. Our end product is, product is beef. But we have to take another step. This beef or these cuts have to mean certain characteristics. Turnerness, smell, chaste, marbling. And these elements are very important in the beef chain. We have to achieve all this through production efficiency and by raising animals that meet the proper char characteristics the right conformation without an excess of fat, a good ribeye area, good tenderness, and those 
features should be measured from an objective standpoint, this is a grading system. And in this way, we will get the value we want to get from the end product. Aníbal, please start with your presentation. I am Aníbal Por Domingo. I work at Inta Anguin in La Pampa, and I am going to share with you some thoughts about the grading of beef. For many years, I have worked and I have analyzed production systems, quality grading systems. This is something we are all, all interested in, in order to find ways of increasing the value of the products when they are good, and in order to understand how through metrics or surrogate markers, or markers that can be easily identified in the beef or in the carcass, we would be able to identify this quality, which is so difficult to grade when, when we are not doing a palatability testing. First, we must acknowledge that although our production system systems are diverse, and that we want to communicate that we may produce homogeneous products, we are not always achieving that goal. And our products are very diverse, especially when the animals are slaughtered and D and the hide is removed, when we have the carcass left and the cats, where well, we find this issue of variability. The scatter, the differences in size of the muscles and the yield of the carcass on the hook and in the rendering, and also the variability in the quality of the beef from the point of view of tenderness, shelf life, color, taste, the possibility of selling it to some markets or to other different markets. Quality is inherent, inherent to the production system, and there are some components that are not seen until we look at the inside, the ribeye area, which describes, helps us to describe the kind of beef that can be taken out of a carcass does not directly relate to the fat thickness. So animals with a good fat or good uh, fat won't have larger ribeyes or animals that are larger in size and whose ribeye areas larger are not necessarily the ones that have the poorest fattening. There's a lot of variability there. If we look at the intramuscular fat related in as a ratio with the rib fat, well, there is huge variability in, in the ranges of marbling vis-a-vis -vis or as compared to the different uh, thicknesses of rib fat or a good rib fat doesn't, good thickness in rib fat doesn't guarantee good marbling. So not even measuring the fat thickness is it possible to measure the marbling. Intramuscular fat, so that's why we talk about marbling. When we want to talk about quality, there is information globally and in Argentina about Another myth, actually, something related to our beef-based culture, which says that the which states that the weight of the core of the animal is related to the tenderness or the cuts to be obtained. Argentinians are prone to think that the lightweight animal provides beef that is more tender or the other way around, but there is no relationship between objective tenderness and the weight of the animal or of the carcass. Talking about young animals, animals that are two and a half years old at the oldest, 
So this is another important component and integrating system such as the one that was available in Argentina until a short time ago would penalize heavier animals when we the situation may just may be the opposite one. So animals that are two years old and weight 450 or 500 kilograms may render best, better f uh, beef quality than animals that are lighter. Systems should aim at being at, as objective as possible. They should be accurate, transfer, transferring information to the consumers and to the producers. The system should be good for global trade. It should be possible to translate the results and information from this system to other global systems. The systems should be quick and ready, readily usable. So there are many systems and proposals that are interesting, but when the time time comes to thinking how to apply them or on how to use them, well, they are not feasible because of labor issues, because of cost issues. They turn out to be too complex. The system should consider the product and should try to convey to the consumers the information about the quality using a simple metric, but the system should also provide information to all the stakeholders in the chain so that, stake so that farmers may take actions for improvement. The current system, which was implemented a short time ago, takes elements from the previous system but complements them with some, complements it, sorry, some concepts. Though the system keeps this issue of category, the way it has lost weight, there is more weight put on uh, teething and age. A heifer is still a heifer, though it may weigh more than X kilograms. And, but in the past, the system would penalize heavier heifer and would consider them as cows. So age is what makes animals move up to other or move down to other categories. A steer calf is still a steer calf when it is young, no matter what, again, his weight is. So now age is important rather than weight. When we talk about young animals, heifers and steer calves, the weight is not as important. Conformation is still present as a grading element for the carcass. A are excellent are the best ones, the ones that have that give the best yield. And D are the poorest quality carcasses. In a previous system, we would use the word joint or together, which was not easy to understand, not even for Argentinian consumers. So using letters makes the system, makes it easier to understand the system. We have the finishing concept the fat, outside fat, very lean carcasses, carcasses with a, lit, with a lot of fat, and the one and two carcasses with the right fat layer. For the domestic market, two and three are carcasses for the export market. Beef with high marbling is not does not always have have a good fat thickness actually the fat thickness should not be excessive and there should be a minimum marbling in the muscle muscles are in the beef so that the beef is tender and has the right color and is palatable 
and bruises. Bruises are, have been included. This is some. This means progress when we come to the grading system in the four quarters and the hind quarters or on the back. So if a carcass shows bruises, it makes no sense uh, graded for to it makes no sense to go to grade it for quality purposes because the good pH will not be achieved. A pH will not the pH will not be below five point eight, so it it will won't be possible to age the beef. pH is a good predictor, and the system, and this is still being discussed. This point, the system, the official system should be simple. It should consider what all the systems in the world consider tender, no, not tenderness, but marbling. The more marbling, more marbling, the higher the expectations of having more tender beef. Color descriptions, co uh, lighter colors, convey the idea of fresh beef and tender beef. The same happens with light fat, though the colors change on the shelf. The label on the beef should describe the features of the beef and of course the measurements of ribeye area and fat thickness so as to have information about the yield, the beef yield of that uh, cat and that the all this information in a system would turn a system that could be harmonized and could be compared to other systems used internationally. Other countries use similar systems looking at that look at marbling. In Argentina, we have equivalences to some of these models. The Australian system can also be compared to our system. So the system Argentina, just like the US system, suggest linking the chronological age or teeth or dentition based age or cartilage based age whether it's an animal of two four six eight or more than eight teeth grading animals that have up to six age if age is combined with a marbling rate, the beef will be graded with categories ranging from A, A plus, which is the best quality beef, that is the perception of quality for consumers, B is an intermediate category, C is not, is a quality which is not that good, and the quality improves as the marbling increases, especially when the animals get older. So in, all, in order to get the same grade in an animal that has two, that has four teeth as compared to one that has two teeth, there should be more marbling in the four, in the animal with four teeth. These are the equivalences. This is the American system and the same will apply to a comparison with the Australian system. Not all animals should be graded. It's young animals that should be graded, those that have up to six teeth, those whose carcasses are category A, B, and C. It would make no sense to grade animals whose carcasses are graded D or E because they will not go into the fresh beef market. Those that are finished with some minimum level of fat. So it, should, it would make no sense to grade very lean animals. And of course, those that have a pH that is below 5.8 from 5.8 from 
eight hours, it would make no sense to grade the animals. So we would, could think of a label that provides a lot of information to the consumers. This is telling consumers that this cat is excellent, that the marbling is very good, and that it comes from a young animal, an animal whose pH at the moment of slaughter was very good, at the time of slaughter was very good. These are, this is uh, information given to the consumers, and it creates an ex it creates an expectation of good quality beef, and it also provides a lot of information to the producers, information which they may use to analyze the availability of the animals coming out of their farm. They may know the fattening levels of the dorsal fat levels of the animals. They may find out about the ratio between dorsal fat and marbling, and even the stutter facilities can look at the pH and may analyze what has happened from the farm to the slaughterhouse. The, the slaughterhouses may also analyze what's, what has happened to the cold chain, and they may also have a look at the process variability throughout the slaughter process. And there are many different uh, labels we could have so that they would be a simple tool that could provide information upwards and downwards. This from the farm to the plate, what we must understand here is that we will grow, we will improve the beef chain if we believe that grading beef rather than grading the carcass of an animal is important. It's important to grade the beef. This is a business that produces beef, not carcasses or live animals. Thank you very much. Buenas tardes. Good afternoon. I want thank you very much for your presentation. Now you are going to give the floor to the second speaker, Engineer Miguel Chavas. Please, Miguel, go ahead. Thank you. No. Me he invitado a este congreso y a su vez este haberme dado la oportunidad Thank you for inviting me to this Congress and giving me the opportunity to share the panel with Aníbal Pordomingo, one of the people who is most knowledgeable about Argentine beef. They asked me to talk about quality of Argentine beef valuing our rent product. I think that the good news is that the world is already doing this, and so it will be rather easy for us to copy or to adapt to what the world is of doing. doing. There are phrases and, and, and quotes that you remember when, I, when one prepared this kind of presentation, genetics, environment, food are necessary ingredients to differentiate the product. We are quality beef uh, producers or uh, bovine livestock that have meat. A pork and um, poultry meat production is integrated and the consumption increases. Raw material is acquired or bought by volume, but then it is classified individually, for example, tomato. Uh, we always want to win, but there's always the possibility to lose. Change, change, change might be difficult, but not changing can be little. 
Today, we don't only talk about um, meat classification, but also about audits in the 90s and uh, in U.S. and audit um, um, started. This audit is done uh, every year, and uh, sometimes we have to um, tell uh, whether where we have started to lose money. Uh, Argentine beef is a raw material produced in different ways. Who's going to take the bull by the horns? We need to look at the potential that we have. For sure, this won't be the government. This is something that has to do with the internal part of this productive um, processes. These this chain has different interests. When I see the breed, breed association have differences, they looked at these packages and they want to trade this package. This is a small package that gives me profit um, based on different things, heritability of calving is also the genetic potential, so there is a huge potential for this product. We are losing um, opportunities, 75% of weaning. Fatteners, we want to have the highest number of produced kilos. The uh, slaughter or the, the coal packaging industry it determines quality. They receive, they slaughter, they process, they mature, and they sell. This is the good coal package industry. But the industry which is not a good packaging industry buys, slaughters, it makes a small processing, and then it sells. Customer is uh, something different. I wrote it in a different color because my customer is um, the uh, retailers or the butcher's shop. When I started to look at what the rest of the world did, I, I see what happens around the world. Canada, what is it that they are looking at, they uh, are interested in quantity of meat or quality of meat. What is the yield grade? What I do in the pre-slaughter? And um, I have to see, once I open that meat, what was it? The color of the fat, marbling, texture, and some people also go beyond that and consider that they can be cooked in different ways. It's, it's interesting in some countries because they have things similar to us. We ha they have grazing cattle, um, beef that has been finished with uh, grazing um, techniques. United States is uh, well known because of the prime meat. is the meat that has had the most marketing and the most uh, sold in the world. Australia, as I said before, is the most similar, is the model that is most similar to our model, but they have different ways of trading. Here, the genetic chain seems the DNA, then they show, first they show grazing land, then they show the cuts, and then they show the meat uh, in the grill. It, this technology to grate meat is available all around the world. We just need to bring it along here. 
they determine this grading of meat in Canada by age, young or old, male or female, then the uh, amount of fat and then the color of the meat, where it is bright red or dark red, is it uh, soft? And then they go to the marketing stage, also grain in it with uh, a different categories, categories A, AA, AAA. There's nothing to be invented. Everything has been done. In uh, Japan, they have the marbling category. When we open the carcass, what is it that we see? The different parts of the animal has different things. There are parts with medium-sized uh, cuts that have only 11% of the weight, and they represent 25% of the value. Others have 25% in weight, but 31% in value. The worst part is the uh, fat that has a volume of 27%, but the value is only 1.6 or 7%. Uh, what happens is that you sell your meat a uh, 100 pesos, per kilo of the cattle on hoof, and then when you go to the butcher shop, you pay 1,000 pesos one kilo of uh, tenderloin. When I continue disassembling this, I will see what is the effect of grading. Uh, depending on how a tenderloin has been graded, we will see the prices from $14 per kilo up to $20 per kilo. I, I, I won't find a slaughterhouse of a coal packer that tells me if your tenderloin is a good quality, I will pay you uh, so much money. The same happens with rump or with other cuts. This is what determines quality. When, when I see that in quality, I have this huge diversity in prices. Uh, and so if you like it, you have to pay an uh, excess value. You have to pay a prime. You have to pay uh, a specific value. And I have two options, the one that the market wants and the one that the market does not want. When I start to see uh, the countries that import or export, U.S. is more imp imports more than what it exports. S they um, import five million dollars. They export less in volume, but they sell it. Uh, at a higher price. So they are importing raw material and they're exporting value. The question is, is this raw material with added value because it is segregated? United States and US and Canada as, a, as New Zealand, Zealand decided to segregate it one by one and they determine the value of each product. So they get rid of deficient raw material or, or poor raw material. Integration contributed to this uh, grading program because it is, uh, it, 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 it's not that I um, uh, use something that the market pays me, but I can plan in the long term. And I, I want a scenario where both industries come together and agree on what is it that each one of them is going to give and what they are going to do. The producer produces, but knows that um, 
whatever the producer produces, they know what the value is. And the same happens on the side of the industry. They will process what the producer gives to them, and they know what will the value be for what they are processing. When we have strikes of uh, truck drivers or uh, uh, farm workers, we need to forget about that. We have to uh, get rid of these uh, specific situations where shall I buy or shall I not buy? Shall I get off? Shall I, shall I uh, leave the market or not? I can make arrangements in the long term for many people, and the external situation shouldn't be a factor, shouldn't be a driver. This is an old and but interesting report where we have that 162 steers were sold. And the cheapest was the one that um, gained $627. This uh, has to do with carcass quality. When I see the carcass, carcass weight, each, of, each individual is very different. We have animals that weighted 300 kilos and some others weighted 800 kilos, but the quality was different. And so this is why they paid. They paid for the quality, not because they were, not because they have a higher weight. If I have a reasonable range between 100 and uh, 115, which is the, the mean or the average up to 150, the uh, coal packers industry uh, have to decide uh, which one falls where. Uh, so when I sort them, when uh, the I, I will sort them into different boxes dependent on the quality. And this is something done all around the world, and Argentina has the technology to do that exactly, uh, they, they know exactly how to do it, and they have all the elements. What What is it that countries that decided to export beef did? They gave the importance, they gave producer or, or um, farmers the uh, importance they deserve. So they improved the value of that product. I, I I don't like those cliches that say that uh, Argentine consumers uh, have the right to eat a good beef. I have to give the Argentine consumers um, a specific number of natural protein. I need to consider what is the protein balance in general, not only protein coming from beef. The biggest producers and exporters in the world, U.S., Brazil, China, India, European, in, uh, European Argentina. Uh, exporters are Brazil, Australia, India, United States, Argentina, New Zealand. Argentina has to decide what is it that they want to export. Do they want to uh, compete with Brazil of India that are um, raw material? They do that because they cannot do anything else, because the environment, because they are not allowed in their habitat. Argentine's habitat is similar to the Australian habitats or the U.S. habitats. So when I look at the prices, I see that Australian beef is 
more expensive than ours. The same happens with the, um, with the meat in Australia or in New Zealand. Uh, I have, we have the condition, we are in a condition to play in the first leagues. I uh, have the environmental quality and I have enough protein to export all this quality meat. This is a clear and specific example. In 1978, uh, um, a, a breed in United States, a race in United States, realized that uh, they have the best beef and the beef that they most love. And they uh, start to generate a brand. This uh, brand was Angus. This means that they produce a race from Montana to Texas, that they have an excellent crossbreeding. It's easy to reproduce. And they, they, they today realize that there's no best premium in the world than the certified Angus beef. In order to achieve this and be able uh, to uh, identify a shelf as uh, Angus certified meat, I need to consider all these elements, marbling, etc. And I can't do this um, with what I have. This is the China for Argentina. What happened in the past few years shows exactly what we should not do. We were unfortunate enough to have the problem that in China they have a health problem. We are, we are in need. But we finally got into it. And it, now you are telling me, remember me, I helped you when you were undergoing a difficult moment. Okay, then now you have to help me and to start grading again. I have quality and uh, this is what we need to look for. The pandemics won't last forever. The pork fever won't last forever. People like tasty beef. What we think the best thing that might happen to Argentina is to um, have a, a, a vessel uh, full of Argentine beef. All these uh, gray containers are raw materials. Miguel, muchísimas gracias. Muchísimas gracias. Muy claro. Thank, thank you very much. Very, very clear, just like Aníbal. Thank you very much for your lecture. I have some couples that have been made by the audience. Eh, Miguel, la primera is... Miguel, the first question. Which do you think is the beef quality that will be required by foreign markets? We know what quality are you asking for now not what they are going to ask for in the future. This is a market which is already demanding some quality. I believe we may make it to Asia, not with the same quality the U.S. have because their quality is already acknowledged in Asia, but we have an opportunity to show characteristics similar to, Argent uh, to U.S. beef at a lower price and with many advantages. Thank you. Aníbal. Which are the supplements that should be used to get better beef quality? And uh, talking, I'm talking about tenderness and marbling. Supplements, well, this is related to the production stage. We talk about supplements, supplements during for the grazing stage or supplements as. Uh, a feedlot diet. Feedlot. If we want to get good beef quality, 
Well, the first indicator we have to look at besides the diet is the weight gain trend, not only during the fattening, but also after that in the grazing area when they are growing by about 800 to 1 kilogram of weight a day. They are growing in fat and muscle. The supplements we may use in that case are energy supplements because we are already using good quality forage and we want to increase the amount of energy. There we have grain, processed grain, etc. In the feedlot, the supplements that may improve the quality of the beef is not necessarily grain, though we always prefer uh, corn-based uh, supplements because of the color. But here we have protein supplements to consider, but we should be cautious there because maybe some color issue, some supplements will not transfer their color to the fat, and this would cause problems when with the expectations within color. But when we talk about supplements, what I would say is that the quality of the supplement is more important than the kind of supplement. So we may talk for hours about the different supplements, soybean meal or sunflower meal, corn or sorghum, but in all cases, the result of the quality is more important. Their quality is more important than their product. There is a lot of variability due to poor quality uh, grains, poor fattening trends because of the poor quality of the supplements or because of poor quality supplements. If the product, if the products have been standardized in other products, well, it's because the feed has been properly classified. Not only the animals are being properly graded. Miguel, my question is, the question is this one. Are Argentinian consumers willing to pay a premium for better beef? And this is related to something you said earlier on. You said we had to produce quality beef and we don't have to be tied to this 55, 56 kilos of meat as if it were a law. The question is, Argentine consumer is willing to pay differentiated beef. There's no doubt that they are, and we have to give them the possibility to choose. I cannot tell them what to do, but what has been proven is that the uh, beef uh, protein uh, is expensive for him. He has protein from a pork or from a poultry. I have the possibility to provide bovine uh, or beef or poultry meat or uh, pork. And so uh, it is different. It's not the same. The, the cuts of the different animals is different. As soon as I have anatomic cuts, I am a, a, a tied to informality, and I am tied to very little possibilities to uh, uh, satisfy my customer who wants to buy uh, a barbecue or blanket uh, on uh, Tuesday in July. And if I have a, a, and my butcher's uh, a blanket over the weekend and round um, a, it does not depend on me. Are Argentine producers to supply external markets? Who is the question for? I will start. Everything can be done, but there must be profitability. And I would like to say something here. What is happening right now with the 
price of carbs is the best thing for the industry. The higher the price of carbs in Argentina, well, two things will happen. Number one, farmers will make more money. They will take better care of their cows, of their calves. And on the other hand, those calves are so expensive from the very beginning that the w their weight must be increased so as to recover the original cost. So this will eventually produce more beef. So what is happening is actually great. Miguel and myself have agreed on this several times. I believe Argentinian producers are ready to sell to many markets. The producers are using a production platform that is very diversified. They have to acknowledge this. Argentina is able to produce beef for different markets with different uh, slaughter systems. We may produce lightweight beef for a domestic market, which would not be accepted in other countries. We would also be able to supply other markets that call for animals for different weights at slaughter time. So Argentina has a good business, has a good chain to produce diverse products. So sometimes we get confused. We mistake product diversity and market diversity with our own heterogeneity. And we believe that that opportunity of diversity will correct our distortions in the production system. So one part should not correct the other part of the system. But I believe our producers are uh, really, bet, bet really well prepared to produce premium beef. Our producers are very competitive. I applaud them. I commend them because if we look at what the whole chain has done during the pandemic, we would realize how the whole chain has adjusted to complex marketing and interaction scenarios. They have worked remotely quite a bit. So if they have been able to do all those things, they should be able to agree on some minimal guidance for beef grading. I agree with Miguel that this is, should be carried out by the private sector bec the, because the public sector will not have the necessary speed. The public sector may support the private sector, but I believe the private sector has a great chance of becoming competitive internationally by speeding up this process. Well, we are, about, we are about to come to the end. I would like to share with you all conclusions that I have taken as you made your presentations. And I, I hope this summarizes what you said. First, having a grading system allows us to categorize and to grade a product and facilitate its trading. This also allows giving a price to a product that will um, recognize or acknowledge the producer they do it correctly. The grading system gives a specific and tangible reference of the producer what has to be produced what are the characteristics an animal must uh, have to be sold at a fair price? The productive sector should look the support of technical institution, INTA, INTI, and develop a grading system and propose it to the government and the industrial sector. I would like to close this with a phrase that calls you to action. This is, if the productive sector does not do it, who will do it? If it is not done, when will it be done? And if you wish to add anything else, we have one minute. Aníbal, 
Uh, it's very simple. Things happen. The world beef market or meat market will continue to exist. Argentine producers will continue to produce. Probably we will have different demand protocols in the future, external, coming from abroad, some domestic one. If we understand that, or we will join flows that happen, when flows occur, uh, sales are not distributed evenly. So my wish would be, although one is an outsider of what happens around the world, one would like to uh, use the opportunity to show what we do. Sometimes the sometimes the market creates itself, or the market creates the demand. I will give the example of the Angus breed in United States. U.S. produces 11 million tons of uh, beef. And a, and a significant part of it are uh, graded as angus. Argentina produces 3 million uh, tons of meat, and only 2,000 are angus certified. And see how close we are to a real transformation. And then I say, let's not put the blame on anybody if it does not happen. Look at the, the mirror every morning and try to find out who is to blame. It's been a pleasure to share with you, Miguel, Aníbal. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jorge.